Here in my Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V Lab, I've got a couple virtual machines here, one running, one not. If I select one of the virtual machines and then go down and click on the settings for this virtual machine, then down to the virtual hard disk, I can go in and I can inspect this virtual hard disk. Here we get some basic information about it. We can see that it is a VHDX file and it is a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk. We also see the path to this virtual hard disk, which is in C colon cluster storage volume two. We see the current file size is 5.7 gigs and the maximum file size is 127 gigs. That's another way we can tell, obviously it's a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk. If I close this out and cancel here, then go into edit disk underneath the Hyper-V server menu. I'll click next here. We need to specify the location of our virtual machine hard disk. I'll click browse. I've got a couple virtual machine hard disks here, but that particular virtual machine hard disk was on the C drive in the cluster storage in volume two, then Windows 8 Enterprise Desktop 1 virtual machine hard disk, and there it is. I'll select open here. I'll click next. And now we've got four different options we can perform related to editing this virtual hard disk. We can compact it, convert it, expand it, or shrink it. In the case of VHD versus VHDX conversion, we would go into the convert option here, then click next. And notice this is where you specify whether or not you want this virtual machine to be a VHD or a VHDX. Now we already know this virtual machine hard disk is already a VHDX, but here we could convert it back to a VHD if let's say you needed to move this virtual machine back to a previous version of Windows Server Hyper-V that didn't support the VHDX virtual hard disk format. Or if you had an older virtual machine that was still using the VHD format, this is the place that you would go in and you would select VHDX to convert that virtual machine hard disk. I'll click next here. Also, this is the place you would convert the virtual machine hard disk from fixed to dynamic or from dynamic to fixed. I would click next here, specify the location, click finish, and we would perform the conversion of our virtual machine hard disk from VHD to VHDX or from VHDX back to VHD. It's really that easy to convert to the new virtual hard disk format. I'll go ahead and click cancel out here because this virtual machine is already using the new VHDX format. Something else I want to point out here is let's say that you wanted to create a new virtual machine hard disk. If I go up here to new, Go down to hard disk, click next. There's where you specify the virtual machine hard disk format, either VHD or VHDX. I'll click next here on VHDX, and then take a look at this. This is another way you can tell we're using VHDX because you have the option here to create a differencing disk. So it says this differencing disk is associated in a parent-child relationship with another disk that you want to leave intact. Remember how I said you could have that core virtual machine hard disk that all your other virtual machines using differencing disk are based on. That core virtual machine hard disk wouldn't be changed, but each of the virtual machines would have their own VHDX differencing disk. Other than starting those virtual machines off at the same place, this is also an easy way to just get rid of any changes associated with those virtual machines, any changes that have been made, and quickly revert those virtual machines back to the original parent or core virtual machine hard disk. In this case, I'll go ahead and select the differencing disk here. I'll click Next. I'll just take the default virtual machine hard disk name and the default location. And then notice this. It says I have to specify the virtual hard disk that you want to use as the parent for the new differencing virtual hard disk. This isn't something you would be asked about if you were just creating a regular fixed or dynamic virtual hard disk. I'll click Browse here. I'll just randomly select one of my virtual machine hard disk. Now we've got a location of the parent or core virtual machine hard disk that the differencing disk would be recording changes from as those changes are made inside the new virtual machine. I'll click next and click finish. And we just created a brand new virtual machine hard disk using the VHDX format and it is a differencing disk. So now when I go in and I create a brand new virtual machine and I specify the virtual machine disk location, I could say I want to use an existing disk. I could go in here to browse, and there's actually the differencing disk that I created. Again, I just took the default name there, new virtual machine hard disk. I'll just go ahead and cancel this out, and let's cancel this out, and then go back to our slides for a quick summary. 
All right, so that's what you need to know about the new Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V Virtual Hard Disk Format VHDX. It now scales up to 64 terabytes in size. That's some enormous scalability there. It gives you better performance. It handles different disk sector sizes, better prevention of data corruption, support for differencing disk, and more. It's only available in Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V, and if you've got older VHDX files, you'll most likely want to convert those to the new VHDX format, which I showed you how to do. It's a very easy process you can walk through inside Hyper-V Manager.